before we go any further, it's time to join the Muppets. Uh, it's time to say goodbye. Uh, one dumpster fire at a time. It's time to ignore the Muppets on the most sensational, celebrational. This is what they call the Muppet Show. <laughs> it wasn't sung very well. Oh. Was that? Right, let's start with, uh, this is a treat, 54 seconds, you can count all of them, of Marjorie Taylor Greene being booed to her face over her, uh, her calamity motion to vacate. Uh, maybe she should just have a vote on herself. Uh, I don't think they want you there. For what purpose does a gentlewoman from Georgia seek recognition? Speaker, pursuant to Clause 2A1 of Rule 9. I seek recognition to give notice of my intent to raise a question of the privileges of the House. The form of the resolution is as follows. Declaring the office of Speaker of the House Representatives to be vacant. This is the uniparty for the American people watching. Gentlelady will suspend. Order. Ted Cruz, it's been a minute since Senator Cupid Stunt opened his trap and went for it, and he's he's weighed in on the Stormy Daniels and the guy that said his dad um, assassinated Kennedy. Uh, you keep it up. Trying uh, to do to, to to get this attenuated. And by the way, the testimony of Stormy Daniels was salacious. Dad, hurry! I'm gonna be late. Sorry to interrupt, but what are you talking about? Uh, politicians paying people. Point of it. Listen, there is no person on planet Earth that believes Donald Trump has been celibate all his life. That is not news. Get but they want it off. Ah! It's suffering. The Nike swoosh had a slogan to go with it, which I think is perfect in this particular scenario. Just do it. All this talk about, oh, if Trump goes to jail, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. Uh, well, bring it on. Uh, Ted Cruz, by the way. Ted Cruz has joined the bandwagon of, you can't possibly lock up somebody who's got 90 felons and is breaking judge, every single gag Trump order. Trump in jail. The short answer is, I believe the answer is no. I don't think the judge will. He'll keep putting fines on him, but I don't think he'll put him in jail. I think if he tried to put him in jail, I think the Court of Appeals would reverse it. They're not going to let Trump go to jail in the middle of this election. And I'll tell you what, if miracle of miracle, the corrupt New York courts did actually send Trump to jail, Trump would win over 300 electoral votes in November. You want to talk about shocking the voters that this is garbage? That would do it. And, and these people are so consumed with partisan hate that, 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 that they're willing to abuse power and that, that, that willingness has no limit. Just a question. Is Lindsey Graham the oldest virgin in Congress? Because he looks like, what do you know what I mean? He just needs something. Something is missing in Lindsey Graham's life. He really should just go ahead and fornicate. One, two. What is Joe Biden's response to withhold weapons in a war that Israel cannot afford to lose? What did we do after we were attacked? Oh! do to end the war against the Japanese. We dropped two nuclear weapons on two Japanese cities to make sure our soldiers didn't have to invade Japan where you could have a million lives lost. What is Joe Biden doing? He's making it impossible for allies throughout the world What's to the trust us. He's making Senator? it hard on Israel to win. Well, it's a bit of a split decision here between saying H-U-H and that well-known phrase, here's the damn stupidest thing with swear word involved you've heard all day. So I'll leave it to you. Kellyanne Conway is opening her gob at, well, go for it, please. You combine the get out the vote program by all the government agencies on the college campuses with the student loan forgiveness. You got a president not paying $130,000 to a porn person. I don't say star because that's an opinion and I don't share it. I have no basis to form it. Uh, but you, you combine that. And you know what, Jesse? Here's what's scary about it. Uh, but seriously speaking, they'll overplay this. They're, they gave her, now she's the abortions are always the Russian title to, to break an issue. Uh, do you want to add something else to the huge long list of things that Laura Trump knows absolutely nothing about, but um, projects and projects, whatever the word is, as if she is some scholar on it. Uh, we'll do basic recent history uh, now. Shutting down the Keystone XL pipeline, inflation, 
continues to go up because of it. Our gas prices we know are high. Gives us uh, on the world stage just a really weak position. You probably wouldn't have seen the war with Russia and Ukraine without that decision. You wouldn't see the war with uh, Israel and Hamas without that decision. Really dumb stuff. By the administration. At this stage, we just need a, a moment to collect our thoughts and escape the nonsense. So uh, we have President Biden, who actually did a very good sit-down interview with um, Aaron Burnett. This is the moment he was talking about things that actually are important, like jobs and the economy. So Trump attended a groundbreaking here where we are for Foxconn. Um, he promised 13,000 jobs and only about 1,000 of those actually exist right now. So I know you're promising more than 2,000 union construction jobs and that 100,000 people are going to get trained in AI here. Why should people here believe that you will succeed at creating jobs where Trump failed? He's never succeeded in creating jobs. And I've never failed. I've created over 15 million jobs since I've been president. 15 million in three, three and three quarters years. And secondly, Microsoft is a serious player. And they're very much engaged in making sure that they pick this area as, a, as sort of the, the home base for their AI initiative in the nation. I'd love a medical expert because this is really beyond anything you can find. I just don't know what to say with regards to this, uh, the fact that RFK has discovered that he has worms in his head. Can I just ask you guys one more thing? The, the New York Times, and this has nothing to do with, well, it has to do with the presidential election, has just come out with this extraordinary... Uh, bizarre uh, article on RFK and they're reporting that doctors in a deposition that RFK said doctors found a worm in his brain that had eaten part of his brain and then died there what, I mean you laugh but I mean what Jason. what might this mean I mean what might this mean to, to an election to, to hearing that he said this it, in it a deposition probably means, and one of the things that I tell my clients all the time is try not to go into depositions high when I was growing up, it used to be a TV show called Wish You Were Here, which is kind of a travel show. Uh, it was on British TV and went to all of the glamorous locations in the world. Uh, I've got an updated version. Just insert Wish You Wasn't Here. Uh, former guy had a bit of a shindig Wednesday night at Mar-a-Lago. Yes, he flew all the way back from New York, where he's got a little bit of a story problem, to have a NFT party. Now, the expression you could say, well, we could ask the question, was it lit? Uh, no, think of another word that rides with lit. Starts with S. About eight months ago, we had one of these videos. Who was it the last time we came to Mar-a-Lago? Oh, oh. The best looking people I've ever seen. Let's go. They come in and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, I can't help. I never wanted to leave. In fact, I was supposed to leave about an hour ago and they didn't mind. You know, I have a fake trial going on with these people. Fake news, fake news. People, they drummed up some nonsense. It's a shame for America. It's a shame, but we've never had better poll numbers. Poll numbers are the highest we've ever had. We're beating crooked Joe Biden by a lot, both in the national polls and in the swing states. We're beating him. Uh, one I just saw today, we're leading by a lot in every single. And I guess I can call you articulate since you're not an American black. Um, can't can't say that about them. That's that's derogatory. Um, and that was a great opening segment. Lots of things to talk about there. I still would not have voted for you um, because you're an Indian. Somebody needs to just take a few moments and explain Mitch McConnell to me because I don't get it. You really think him and Trump like each other? Switch for Connell? Literally the stuff, all the things he's come up with and now he's in Trump's corner? Is it anything for power? Is he desperate? What exact? Just explain this. Yeah. Given all the allegations that have come out against the former president in the criminal hush money trial, including covering up an alleged affair with Stormy Daniels, does it give you any pause in supporting him for president? Look, I have said to you all, and basically to you every week. I, <laughs> I don't blame you for trying, but I'm not going to be commenting on the presidential election. I'm going to concentrate on trying to turn this job over to the next. 
fascinating thing about Trump, there's literally a whole circus of people who make a career off of his name. Uh, some of them have worked for him, like Scaramucci. Uh, another one is Omarosa. Uh, and this is the thing, they've actually worked for him. So you always do take a little bit of a pinch of salt when they speak. But anyway, Omarosa is now back on cable news, getting her money and uh, the latest I should go to check for it, but just put it out there. The latest little bit of scandal for her, as far as she's concerned, is he pays people off. Well, it's hardly a surprise. My thing is, why didn't you say it when you had a seat at the table? Seems simple enough. It was terrible. And the, 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 the reality is, and I've said this on, in other interviews, I mean, he's running against what would be the first woman president. So he's already mm -hmm. has to position himself to be able to win women voters. But his whole history, the, the, you know, the leering at his daughter, the gross things mm -hmm. he said about women and, and Miss USA pageants, et cetera. How did, did was there a sense that they had to shut these women down? And does it ring true to you what he's being charged with that he was willing to pay and reimburse Michael Cohen for him to pay to keep Stormy Daniels from being added to the list. Well, Joy, I want to take you back a little bit to 2006, something that I think uh, Stormy Daniels referenced. When he was promising her that she could be on The Apprentice, she was talking sure. about Celebrity Apprentice. I actually appeared on that season, the first season of The Celebrity Apprentice, and there was actually another playmate that actually ended up on the cast of Celebrity Apprentice. I don't know if you recall that, but Tiffany Fallon was selected for that cast instead of, I believe, Stephanie um, Stormy Daniels or any of the other. Yeah women, yes, that were lobbying to be in that spot. So Donald was actually successful in getting one of his paramours on our season. But in terms of whether or not I believe that he does that, I've seen them pay off people. I've seen them try to pay off folks to silence them. In fact, I, I don't know if you recall, they actually tried to do the same thing to, to, to me, where they I tried do. to offer $20,000 a month or something like that for me to work on the campaign for several years so that I wouldn't share what I actually shared in my book. So this is kind of their pattern. This is par for the course in Donald Trump's world. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, Wisconsin. Nick, thanks for that introduction. Look, before, uh, before I get started, I want to set the record straight. Please sit down. I went to uh, a Catholic high school in Delaware taught by the Norbertine priest from St. Norbert's College, uh, you know, a, a, little town, a little team called Green Bay. <laughs> now, here's the deal. We were the only high school in Delaware that overwhelmingly rooted for Green Bay. Every, not a joke, I'll tell you why. Every single Sunday. Not only did they have great teams at the time, we still do, but not only that, my theology professor at the Catholic school I went to was a guy named Riley, last name. And he had been drafted by the Green Bay Packers. And he decided to become a priest before that, so he didn't go. But every single solitary Monday that Green Bay won, we got the last period of the day off. <laughs> now, we Catholics call that indirect bribery, but it worked. <laughs> It's always great to be with one of the best governors in America, Tony Evans. I think of Tony, I mean it. I think of one word, integrity. You're a man of absolute integrity. And uh, what I'm really doing, I'm really auditioning for a job with uh, a little company's going to build something out here. Thank you for the comments you made about what we're doing together. Well, look, uh, while she couldn't be here, I want to thank the best, one of the best U.S. Senators in the United States of America, a good friend of mine, Tammy Baldwin. I mean it. You also got a great mayor in Racine. 
Corey Mason. Brad Smith, President of Microsoft, thank you for your partnership, for showing how we can get things done and big things done in America. And thank you for your friendship. I really mean it. And Liz Schuller, President of LCI, thank you for all you do for benefit the American Union movement. Those, you know, I got called the most pro-union president in American history. I make no apologies for it. No. I'm serious. Middle class built America, but unions built the middle class. I've been saying that for a long time. Folks, I'm here to talk about a great comeback story in America. I'm sure you remember, Racine was once a manufacturing boomtown all the way through the 1960s. Power companies invented a manufacturing Windex, portable vacuum cleaners, and so much more and powered by middle-class jobs. And then came trickle-down economics, cut taxes for the very wealthy and the biggest corporations, again in the 60s. We shipped American jobs overseas because labor was cheaper. We slashed public investment in education and innovation. And the result, we hollowed out the middle class. My predecessor in his administration doubled down on that failed trickle-down economics, along with the trial of broken promises. Look. My dad used to have an expression. He said, Joey, a job, I mean this sincerely. A, my dad was a well-read man, never got to go to college, but he was a good man all across the board. And he'd say, Joey, remember, a job's a lot more than a, about more than a paycheck. It's about your integrity. It's about your dignity. It's about being treated with respect. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, everything's going to be okay. In fact, six years ago, when my predecessor came to Racine with the promise of, quote, reclaiming our country's proud manufacturing legacy. Well, we had Infrastructure Day every, every week, every week for four years. Didn't build a damn thing. <laughs> he and the administration promised a $10 billion investment by Foxconn to build a new manufacturing complex, create 13,000 new jobs. In fact, he came here with your senator, Ron Johnson, literally holding a golden shovel promising to build the eighth wonder of the world. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look what happened. They dug a hole with those golden shovels, and then they fell into it. <laughs> Look, they didn't shovel other dirt. They did shovel some dirt. One hundred homes were, bo were bulldozed. They wasted hundreds of millions of dollars, your state and local tax dollars, to promise a project that never happened. Foxconn turned out to be just that, a con. Go figure. In just four years under his administration, instead of creating 13,000 jobs in Racine, my predecessor and 100 and 1,000 manufacturing jobs, rather than creating them, 1,000 manufacturing jobs left Racine. 85,000, 83,500 total jobs left Wisconsin during my predecessor's term. But that's not on my watch. We're determined to turn it around. Thus far, since we've come to office, we've created, and with the governor's overwhelming leadership, we've created over 178,000 jobs in Wisconsin. We're going to create more here in Racine, and big time. Some of my friends on the far right have criticized my investing in the American agenda, my, which includes my bipartisan infrastructure law, the Chips and Science Act, and the Inflation Reduction Act. A lot of businesses that have supported it as a key to economic growth that we're seeing now. Remember here, you're going to hear a recession next week, a recession next week, no soft landing. Well, in fact, I've asked business leaders like Brad a simple question. When the United States decides to invest considerable resources in a new industry, that we need to build, does that encourage or discourage them engaging? The answer overwhelmingly is it encourages business investment. And that's what we're seeing now with our administration. My investing in America agenda is fueling historic boom and rebuilding our roads and bridges, developing and deploying clean energy, revitalizing American manufacturing, and so much more. So far, we've created 
$866 billion in private sector investment nationwide, almost a trillion dollars. Historic amounts, such a short time. Now, it's literally creating hundreds of thousands of jobs, building new semiconductor factories, electric vehicles and battery factories, and so much more, here, all here in America. Today, it's another example of the private sector optimism. Microsoft, as the President already pointed out, is investing $3.3 billion to build a new data center here in Racine. That's going to help operate one of the most powerful artificial intelligence systems in the world, and I've gone around the world, literally, not figuratively, meeting with the leading architects of AI. It's going to result in 2,300 union construction jobs just to build a new facility. And 2,000 permanent workers to work in the data centers. In addition, we're also providing a pipeline to train these for new, these new jobs. A pipeline that starts right here at this very spot. Microsoft is partnering with Gateway Technical Community College right here to train and certify 200 students a year to fill high demand, good paying jobs in data and IT at Microsoft's new AI Day Center here in Racine. But that's not all. In addition, Microsoft is continuing a pipeline going to high schools in nearby Mount Pleasant to train high school students for jobs of the future. As the boss pointed out, it's going to create 100,000 jobs over time. It's all part of Microsoft's broad plan to build an artificial intelligence ecosystem right here in Racine. And it's going to be transformative, not here, just here, but worldwide. It's not only significant investment in infrastructure in Racine, but for the people of Racine. It means folks are getting trained. Folks are getting trained in new, high-paying, high-skilled jobs that don't require a four-year college degree and don't require you to leave home. You know, where I come from, that really matters. I know what it's like when your parents have to move the family in search of work because there's no jobs. What it does to the family's dignity. My wife, Jill, who teaches full-time at a community college, cares a lot about this as well. Last year, she announced our first five workforce hub sites to build a pipeline of workers and industries that create the new hometowns. That are creating new, there are new hometowns in Phoenix, Baltimore, Columbus, Ohio, Augusta, Georgia, building everything from semiconductors to electric vehicles. Last month, I announced four new hubs to continue to train workers for the jobs of the future, one of which is in Milwaukee that trains workers to help replace every poisonous lead pipe in America in a decade of funded by the infrastructure. <laughs> and by the way, Buy America has been the law of the land since the 30s, but it's been ignored by most administrations. Past administrations, including my predecessor, failed to buy America. Not anymore. Here's how it works. When the, pre when the Congress sends something to the President, to build something, whether it's a road, a highway, a deck of an aircraft carrier, whatever it is, that president be back from the law that's passed in the 30s. It's supposed to hire American workers to build it and use American products. Well, on my watch and Tammy's leadership, federal projects like the Blontnick Bridge here in Wisconsin, it's going to cost a billion dollars. But it's all, all American-made, all American products, and all American work, and it's create, going to create 10,000 new jobs. 10,000. In addition, the roads and highways and so much more will be made with American products, built by American workers, creating good-paying American jobs. What's happening in Racine is really important for another reason. We'll see more technical community colleges, technical changes needed in the next 10 years than we saw in the last 50. AI is already driving that change in every part of American life, from how we teach and learn to how we solve the biggest challenges from curing cancer to climate change. America is a global leader in AI, and American companies lead the world in AI innovation in a lot of what we're going to see here in Racine. Because of our initiatives, American workers will power that innovation here in America. But look, to get the full benefit of all these safeguards, we need safeguards. 
That's why, as the President pointed out, I signed the landmark executive order on which the most significant action any government has taken anywhere in the world has ever taken for AI safety, security, and trust. This order helps make sure workers have a seat at the table in determining how these technologies are developed and used. For real. And we'll support workers in every industry by defending the right to a fair wage to organize as these technologies emerge across the board. And they're going to happen. <laughs> Folks, during the previous administration, my predecessor made promises which he broke more than kept, and left a lot of people behind in communities like Racine. On my watch, we make promises and we keep promises. And we leave no one behind. Since I took office, we've added nearly 4,000 jobs in Racine. As I said earlier, we've added 178,000 in the state of Wisconsin. The unemployment rate has hit a record low in Racine. Racine has seen some of the strongest new business growth in all of Wisconsin. And it's only just beginning. We're seeing a great American comeback story all across Wisconsin, and quite frankly, the entire country. The bottom line is, we're doing what's always worked in this country, giving people a fair shot, leaving nobody behind, and grow the economy in the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. When that happens, everybody does well. Everybody does well. Let me close with this. When folks see a new factory being built here in Wisconsin, people going to work making a really good wage, in their hometowns. I hope they feel the pride that I feel. Pride in their hometowns making a comeback. Pride in knowing we can get big things done in America still. And folks, I've never been more optimistic, and I've only been around a couple years, I know. <laughs> I know I don't look it, but I'm on 40 plus two types. Well, anyway. <laughs> but I've never more, op I swear to God, I've never been more optimistic about our future. We just have to remember who in hell we are. We're the United States of America, and there's nothing beyond our capacity when we work together. Nothing. I mean that. Nothing. The rest of the world looks to us. So keep it going. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you.